Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late today. I was having computer difficulties. Um, it wanted to update and I don't want it to because it, it screws up everything. Anywho, uh, I hope you guys are doing well. And oh my god, I have like the, I have a word from the Lord, but it's going to come up about in a weird way. Um, this week, I think on Tuesday, I had a dream, but it was not really a prophetic dream. It was just, it was um, more of a healing dream. Okay. Um, so, um, I, wa I watch this church online um, consistently um, and I dreamt that, well, I was awake, I think it was probably um, an awake dream at night when you're awake but your, your body is like kind of um, not here, like so you're seeing things but you're awake. So anyway. I had a dream that I was speaking at this church. This The church is real. The pastor's real. But I've never been there, and I don't know him. I don't know his wife. I don't know the church, although I love it. And, and I, you know, follow it. Um, so anyway. I had a dream that I was speaking at this church and um, before I was speaking we, we had a meeting about uh, what I would need for the sermon. So I met with their creative staff and their creative team to, to discuss what I would need for the sermon. And what I asked in my dream was, um, what negative emotions do they go to bed with at night? Uh, what, what negative feelings do they go to bed with at night? And we started just brainstorming negative feelings like loneliness and unwanted, um, and fear and failure and all of these inadequacy and all these negative emotions we put them down on a chart like it was like an old-fashioned uh, web like a word web where a word uh, went in the middle like uh, what do, like uh, so I a asked this person's staff, like, what do they go, like, what negative emotions do they live with about themselves? So anyway, we put those negative emotions on chart paper. And I had somebody get several pillows, um... And put each word that we put on the chart paper on a pillow, and um, and then I said to the team that I needed um, the biggest bed they could find that could fit on the stage, and of course, in the dream, they looked at me like, "What? What is going on?" I wanted to know myself. So anyway, come Sun, well, Sunday came, and I was speaking on the stage, and they brought out the bed that they had, had found, and they brought out my pillows, and then I, the pillows with all the negative words on them, and the negative emotions, like fear, and inadequacy and 
insufficiency and lacking and all all these words would come up with during the week. So anyway, um, so I asked um, the pastor and one of the pastor's friends to help me with the illustration and they were like, okay, um, okay. They didn't know what, what I had planned. Right? So, I asked the pastor uh, to, to lie on the bed with his clothes on. It was totally PG. And I asked his friend um, to show, to grab a pillow and show the audience the word the word that was on the pillow. So the audience were yelling at words like fear, loneliness, inadequacy, and all, all of that. And then when he would show the audience a pillow with a word and they would uh, yell, yell it out, he would put the word... Uh, somewhere on the bed behind the pastor, behind and around and whatever. All the negative words covered the bed. It was very high and you could only kind of see uh, the, the man's face. And he was covered with all these uh, negative uh, words that were on these pillows. And after that, um, I got his wife to come on stage and say, and I said, okay, now try and get uh, clothes on, everything appropriate. I said, try and get in the bed with your husband covered with all those words and all those negative emotions and she the words were so much and so high you, you could barely see her husband or any anywhere on the bed all you could see was pillows with all these negative horrible emotions that humans feel about themselves and I said, okay. Uh, she said, well, I can't get in. This is like my husband's covered with all these uh, negative emotions. I, I, I can't get in. I said, well, and I asked the audience, uh, what, what would you do if, if your loved one was covered with all these negative emotions. And somebody said, pray. And I said to the wife, okay, start praying for your husband. Don't do anything uh, for your husband, but pray for him. And she said, uh, okay. She said, Lord, help my husband with, with all these negative emotions. And, and like she started praying for her husband and I said and I as the moderator preacher said hmm I, th I don't think this is working she started praying and really just seeking the Lord I said what else should she do uh, to, to uncover her husband and all these pillows on him and somebody else from the audience said well move them over well just move them over um so that you can make room for them for yourself in in the bed but there were so many pillows with all these words on it like fear and inadequacy 
not enough, loneliness, unrequited love, all of these negative words. She tried to push them aside, but they were too much. She pushed and pushed and couldn't get them off. And, um, and somebody said, just, uh, somebody else from the audience said, just throw them off. Your husband's buried in them. Just throw them off. And she just started throwing them off. Oh, no, no, no. Before, before that, um, someone else from the audience said, yell help. And so you could hear the, the husband's voice yelling, help, help. And she just, she just attacked them. She just threw them off on the stage and then got to her husband. And I said, in my dream, I said, that's what we have to do sometimes. And I said, sometimes we need to, it, it's wonderful to pray. It changes things. It does things. It really moves heaven. But sometimes, but sometimes we need to take action. And sometimes we can't po politely mo move the devil and all the negative emotions he sent away. We can't politely move them over and just coexist with them. And that's what we try to do. And I said sometimes we, we need to get unpretty and push all, all these negative emotions off our beds, off. Sometimes we've lived with all these inadequacy, fear, loneliness, discontentment. We live with all these negative emotions for long and we just want to just scoot them over but we still want to coexist with them. But but most times what we need to do is get mad and push them out of the way. And while we're pushing them, we need to deal with them. And this is what I said in the dream. And then I woke up and I was like, <laughs> I was hyperventilating because this thing was so powerful. I was like, Lord, what do you want me to, to do? Uh, what do you want me to say to your people? This was so powerful. He said, he said, a lot of people carry, live with fear, live with loneliness, live with insufficiency, live with inadequacy, live with all these negative emotions and that it's stacked um, on their, their beds so high that you can't even see the person. Uh, and he said, most times they don't show up with pillows on a bed they show up in anger. They show up um, in not being close to your kids. They show up in like just a distance. And having all these negative emotions, what it does, it creates a distance between you and your loved ones, you and your uh, co-workers, you and your, um, the people in your life. And sometimes uh, people will see uh, you dealing with negative emotions, you dealing with fear and dealing with doubt. And because they don't know what to do, they let you just um, sit there and 
emotionally um, die and rot and just say, oh, you'll be all right. But sometimes you need to be some, you need to be like that pastor's wife in the dream and shove and go and get your loved ones because sometimes they can't see that these emotions are choking them, that they're filling up their beds so much that people can't get in, although that they try. And those neg negative emotions create a wall. And that wall is like a fortress for them. It protects people from hurting them. It protects people from um, misusing them, abusing them. But what they don't realize is it also, that wall of negative emotions can protect, can prevent people from getting in. And usually the wall, you, usually you can't see pillows on the, on the person. Usually the wall is invisible. You can't penetrate it um, because they won't like, let you see it. And, and the Lord said to me, for myself, he said, he said, what unwanted partners or what things are you going to bed with and not letting people know about? And he had me take mine out and examine them. He said, uh, you need to go uh, to the root of every emotion. And you can't sweep it off. You need to take it out and examine it and deal with it. And you, um, he said, that's what therapists do. That's what counselors do. They help you examine those negative emotions, those things that are holding you back so you can have a life of freedom. The Lord so wants you today to have a life of freedom, to have a life of joy, to have a life of peace. He wants that for you today. So he wants to get all those unwanted bed partners off your bed so you can make room not only for your husband or for your wife, but for him, so many, so many people, the pillows on your bed with the uh, unwanted emotions are so high that not, oh, not even he could get in. You worship, you praise, you go to church, you even read your Bible, but he's not really in you because what happened? is some trauma in your life has stopped you from even trusting him. And you know, you know things intellectually. You know intellectually that he'll never leave you or forsake you or that he loves you, but you haven't received it. Because that wall of pillows in that bed is so high that no one even gets in. And he told me something now, I'm not married, but this is what the Lord said. He said that even sometimes uh, w with uh, making, well, and this is so embarrassing for me to talk about, but I'm not, because I'm not married, but this is what he said. He said, sometimes for you married people, even uh, making love to your husband or your wife, you're not you're not letting the walls come down you're having sex but no intimacy your your body's doing all the natural things but you're not letting them in you still have walls around your heart 
You've been married for 20 years. You've been married for 19 years. You've been married for five years. But that person still doesn't know you. That person still doesn't know you. You've been eating with them, sleeping with them in both ways. You've ha you had three kids with them. You've had you built a life with them, and they still don't know you because you're bad. You're in there's an invisible bed around you, piled with pillows, and they can't get to you. So he's saying, let them. Let them dig you out. If you can't dig yourself out, if you can't crawl out yourself, let them help you dig out. Let them help you dig out. And don't be afraid. If, if you don't feel comfortable with letting them help you dig out because of the, those pillows around your heart or or that wall around your heart get a professional talk to a pastor um talk to someone who can give you tools to help you examine and get to the root of those negative emotions because if you don't get to the root and get those negative emotions out of your life you'll be You'll be missing the essence of your family and your friends and your loved ones. You'll be missing the beauty of your life if you don't get those unwanted bed partners out. The devil's been messing with you for so long. Don't get give him that power. Don't give him that power. And if you need help, there is help available. And the first help that is available is Jesus Christ. And when the Lord really showed me this dream, it really healed me. It really caused me to take each negative emotion that I'm struggling with out to and deal with to deal with them and it was freeing. So not only a few weeks ago did I learn uh, to give my negative emotions a voice, I learned to really examine where those emotions come from. And it's not easy when you begin to peel away the layers and examine uh, where they come from. But I'm telling you, brother, I'm telling you, sister, it's worth it. And he wants you to have a life and have more abundantly. So many people are just existing, but they're not living. And today, the Lord wants you to get all those negative emotion pillows off your bed. And you know why they're pillows instead of instead of bricks? Sometimes they're comfortable. Sometimes they feel good to stay in those negative emotions because because it just feels good because you're protected and you don't have to worry about being hurt. But at the same time. They feel good and they feel comfortable. All those pillows are stifling you. They're, le they're not letting people around you and close to you. They're not letting people love you the way they would if they were not there. And pillows are comfortable. We all need pillows. We all need pillows for our head, and sometimes, like me, pillows for our knees and pillows for our backs. But if if a need becomes uh, when when you have too many comfort comfort zones around you, 
and the need becomes a crutch, it becomes a killer. When a need becomes a crutch, it becomes a killer. All those stuffed, fluffy pillows that you that you have around you, all that wall that you have around you forged in steel, it's preventing the abundant life that God has for you. And he wants freedom for you desperately. He's saying, child, be free. He's saying, son, be free. He's saying, daughter, be free. And it's not, and it's not, freedom is not easy. Freedom takes work. Freedom takes pain. Freedom takes toil. All of this, but on the other side of freedom is a world that you could only dream of, that he has for you. See, um, the children of Israel came out of came out of Israel, but spent years in the wilderness because they just uh, were too disobedient to be free. He's saying, freedom is just around the corner. All you have to do is grab the hand of Jesus and he will guide you to the people that will be his assistants in being free. Like like that pastor's wife needed to dig, needed to get all those pillows off the bed so that he could uh, be free and come up off the bed. Uh, you, you have someone like that in your life to help dig, dig you out of your pain, to help dig you out of your loneliness, to help dig you out of your inadequacy, to help dig, dig you out of uh, your lovelessness, your prayerlessness, and all those negative emotions or negative attributes. God wants you to live a life beyond description. God wants you to live a life beyond description. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to have joyous moments. He doesn't want you to be pre depressed and just wait to die. He said, I am come that you will have life. We we often quote that scripture wrong in John. We say I have come, but it's like but it says I am come. So he is here. He doesn't he he doesn't he hasn't been here. He is here. He said, I am come that you may have life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. He wants you to have that overflowing life and he wants you to get the tools to deal with those negative emotions. And I'm not saying negative emotions will never come when you clear out the clutter, but when but when you have tools to deal with them, life becomes wonderful. Life doesn't only become manageable, life becomes joyful. The key to life, a person can get through anything in their life if they have the tools to get through it. You can fix anything if you have the tools to get through it, and that's what uh, uh, good therapy does, that's what pastoral counseling does, that's what a, a great prayer, prayer life does. It gives you tools to deal with what you have to deal with, and the Lord wants you to have tools to live the life that he wants you to live. And, and the life that you were dreaming of is not a fantasy. 
it can be reality. You can be debt free. You can have a happy relationship. You can have a thriving, wonderful marriage. You can. It's not a fantasy. It can be a reality if you have the right tools. All you, all you need is the, the person, um, the professional, either the book, either the book or the professional to give you the right tools. And that's what therapy does. That's what professionals do. They don't fix you. A book can't fix you. Therapy can't fix you. But what it can do is give you tools. And God can fix you, but often he doesn't because if you give a person tools, they'll know how to navigate any life principle. If you give a, any life situation, if you give a person tools and principles, they all know how to navigate any situation. And the Lord is saying this for parents. Now, I'm not a parent, but he's saying this. He's saying, don't uh, tell your kids what to do. Give them tools on how to navigate things, and they will figure out for themselves what to do. Give your kids tools. He's saying, I don't have children, but this is what the Lord is saying to me. He's saying, give your kids tools, and they will navigate every, situ every situation. Don't just jump in there and rescue them all the time. Uh, don't just jump in there and give them money and rescue them all the time. That's just a short-term fix. Give them tools on how to save their money. Take them to the bank. Uh, give them books on how to manage their finances, even at a young age. I've been reading a lot of books about CEOs. I've been reading um, uh, a book. Um, I read the CEO of Disney. I read the CEO of Netflix. I've read one of the one of the books from the CEO of Starbucks. Not not because um, I can take what they implement. But I can take the tools for when I leave the church and the entertainment company that God will eventually uh, bring into my life. So now I'm getting prepared with the tools so that when it comes, I, I can have a better understanding of how to navigate situations. Um, now, the, the situations that I will face lead, leading a church will be different from what the CEO of Starbucks faces and what the CEO of Disney faced and what the founder of Netflix faced. But the tools to navigate will be the same. And if I have the tools, I can navigate situations. And that's what we need in this generation. We need people right now teaching tools of how to navigate situations. That's what we need. We don't need people to jump in and do it for us. We need people to give us tools to show us how to do it, to give us tools that are tried, tested, and true for some basic uh, tools and understanding in life. A lot of people in my age bracket and younger are lost, not because they don't have people to help them. It's just because um, they have no tools. Um, we haven't gone are the days where 
people of this generation have older people just giving us tools of how to get through life, how to get through relationships, how to save our money simply because they don't have the tools. So what we all need now is tools because with tools you can fix anything. With the right tools either physically and emotionally or spiritually, you can fix anything. And with principles, he says, um, wisdom is the principal thing, and with all you're getting, get wisdom, get understanding. And that's what needs to happen. So, bye guys, I will see you later. There was an old saying, g g give, a, give a kid a fish, they'll fish for a day. Teach a kid how to fish, they'll fish for a lifetime. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye.